I don't know what you mean. He was the strangest member that ever belonged to the battalion and entirely different from other fellows. Some said he was crazy, some said he was weird, others said he was queer, while many insisted from the beginning that he was a spy. I refer to, of, co uh, to, of course, the most interesting goat in the world. Born Billy Goat, he came from humble farm origins in Saskatchewan, and uh, somehow he was elevated to the status of being a war mascot for the Fighting Fifth and a symbol of their grit and tenacity throughout the war. Now, there are many superb and notable mascots from World War I, because at the time, it was common practice to adopt an animal as a mascot for one's unit and take it to the front lines. Uh, many men would smuggle their pets from home, and uh, this served several purposes. One, uh, morale, it's incredibly motivating, like, well, screw you guys, we've got a war duck. Uh, <laughs> Also, these animals served as a source of comfort and a reminder of home. It was this foothold of normalcy in just a horrific time in their lives. And uh, also, people just love a tangible symbol of something bigger than themselves. You're welcome. There are more for sale at the merch table. Anyway. Goats are particularly badass, and it turns out that in World War I, goats were the most popular mascots. But I am not talking about goats in general, I am talking about one goat's adventure in particular. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, as you all know from history class, I don't know. Uh, August 4th, 1914, Britain enters the Great War, and uh, so does Canada. So in August, thousands, tens of thousands of men were enlisting and volunteering uh, and, and going to training camps. So on August 23rd, which was a Sunday, uh, some new recruits at the Broadview train station in Saskatchewan met a woman named Dur Daisy Kerwain, who was out on a stroll with her cart goat, Bill. And uh, the men asked if they could take the goat with them as uh, a symbol for their regiment and also as, as a source of luck. And she agreed. And thus, Bill's adventure at training camp began. <laughs> Sergeant Baldwin wrote, Bill is a goat to be proud of. When the battalion was drawn up in review order and strictly at attention, no soldier ever stood more erect. He would stand with the transport all four legs firmly braced on the ground, his head held high without a flicker or movement. <laughs> he was for the most part one of the men. He trained with them, he lived with them, and he was treated just like one of the soldiers. This is like, where's Waldo? <laughs> uh, there was a special exception for Bill, however. Bill, and only Bill would not be punished for failure to shave while on parade. <laughs> By October of the same year, 1914, the men were to ship out to England and their colonel ordered them to leave Bill behind. <sighs> Do you think they followed that order? No, no. We could not part with Billy. The boys argued that we could easily get another colonel but it was too far to the Rocky Mountains to get another goat. Now they just needed a cunning plan, which was this. They had their goat, but how would they get the goat to England? It turns out, if you buy an entire crate of oranges from a woman who is vending oranges near the Broadview train station, uh, you can sell the oranges to other soldiers, make a tidy profit, and then stuff a reluctant goat into the, the orange crate <laughs> Seal it inside, and that's how you tote a goat on a boat. Whatever floats your goat, am I right? Oh, boo to you too. <laughs> when the men arrived in Devonport in England, there was another issue. This was not the only obstacle that they had to uh, surmount. As Bill was livestock from another country, he had to go into medical quarantine and was immediately separated from the men. However, I don't know if you know this about goats, but they are masterful escape artists. 
somehow this animal, which is noted for its cunning, agility, climbing ability, jumping ability, somehow he broke free. I imagine he just parkoured his way out of the, uh, the restriction. And he rejoined the battalion. He found the men of the fifth. And thus began the adventure in France. <laughs> the next few months in the front lines of France were not too bad for old Bill. The men adored the goat. He was invited to officers' parties. He participated in boxing matches. He was undefeated. He developed a taste for canteen beer and apparently was quite the party animal and hilarious when drunk. Uh, beer was really hard to come by, so he couldn't get into trouble too often, but it did not help that the men kept sneaking him beer whenever they could because it delighted them to see him in his cups. However, Bill had a penchant for trouble. Within the very first few months of his service, he was court-martialed twice. <laughs> the first time, in early 1915, Bill was found nosing around the orderly room and fled when another officer entered the room. Lo and behold, the nominal roll was missing. Bill was arrested, and sure enough, a search of his billet turned up chewed up scraps of nominal roll. What was he doing with this sensitive information? Why did he eat it? Was he hiding something? Was he covering his hoof tracks? Was he a spy? N no, he's, he's a goat. <laughs> Only two weeks later after this un oops, unfortunate incident, Bill was in trouble again. A superior officer scolded Bill for one of his unabashed caprine capers, and this was embarrassing for Bill, and he did not appreciate being publicly humiliated. So after the confrontation, the officer turned around to leave, and old Bill, yeah, you guessed it, Bill gave him the horns. And thus he was arrested again for striking a superior officer. He was stripped of all rank, and that's how you demote a goat. <laughs> However, Bill quickly redeemed himself at the Second Battle of Ypres. Under heavy fire, the men of the Fifth discovered Bill pinning down in a, a bewildered enemy combatant in a nearby shell crater. Despite a shrapnel wound to the neck, Bill refused to let this Prussian scout go until reinforcements of the Fifth arrived. They tenderly nursed him back, the beloved goat, to health, and he was awarded the rank of sergeant for capturing the assailant. And that's how the goat smote the cutthroat. <laughs> I'm running out of rhymes, you guys. Bill continued to serve in the front lines with the men of the 5th, and he saw dozens of battles, and he endured the same arduous hardship as the soldiers. He, too, was gassed at Ypres. Uh, in 1915, he received more shrapnel at Festibert in the, in the withers and the neck and the back. Uh, he also suffered trench foot that winter in the wet conditions of, of the trenches, as did the other men. At Vimy Ridge, he was shell-shocked, and yes, a goat can get PTSD. Um, and if you, will, if you will, above, please note the goat coat. <laughs> on, uh, on the front leg there, you can see his wound stripe that he earned for all of his injuries sustained in battle. So, uh, do you remember this goat anecdote of note? <laughs> Last one. Well, turns out old Bill headbutted another officer. At the Battle of Vimy Ridge in 1917, Bill bolted across the front lines where he headbutted another sergeant of the 5th and two more soldiers into a muddy trench and leapt in right after them. Seconds later, an artillery shell hit right where they had been standing and exploded the mound. Bill saved three people's lives due to his superior hearing. Good goat, right? Now, uh, in this headlines, it totally doesn't attribute the win at Vimy Ridge to, to Bill, but I think we can all agree that he totally uh, won that battle and therefore he won World War I. Uh, so, Vimy Ridge was a huge victory for Canada, uh, as we know, due to Bill. And uh, as the war progressed, he became one of the very few original members of the fifth. There were high casualties throughout the war. Many men were lost, but not Bill. And this 
tough as nails bad goat survived the grueling hardship of trench warfare, trench warfare. Battle after battle after battle, he just kept going. Billy the goat is still going strong, and it is the boast of the fifth that Kaiser Wilhelm has not yet got their goat. <laughs> Bill kept kicking, or rather headbutting, but all the way to Armistice Day of November 11th, 1918. As the war ended, Sergeant Bill and the rest of the 5th Battalion traveled to Berlin. They marched in the Grand Victory Europe Parade, Bill wearing a blue plush coat with his rank, wound stripe, crest of the battalion, and a five embroidered on the flank. He was the only original mascot in the parade, i.e. the only animal that had served the duration of the war and not been replaced. Like, oh no, our war duck expired, let us get another duck. Uh, he received many accolades for his service. Many, uh, the, the, the battalion got many medals overall, and he got some specific medals for his service. And in 1919, he returned home with the battalion. Uh, the records note that there was some trouble at immigration getting re-entry to Canada. It doesn't say how, how that, sol that was solved. I imagine there was some creative headbutting and parkouring out of immigration. <laughs> uh, we can only imagine. But the 5th Battalion demobilized on April 24th in 1919. With his, with his grand adventure behind him, he returned to the Kerwain farm and lived carefree for the rest of his goatee days. When he did pass away, the 5th Battalion paid to have him stuffed and mounted where he was prominently on display in a legislative building. <laughs> and you can still visit Billy Goat! In his parade regalia, where he now presides at the Broadview Historical Museum in Saskatchewan, an enduring reminder of grit and tenacity during the Great War. And so, a goat toast. A toast to Billy Goat, the roughest, toughest mascot. A reminder, if your superior officer gives you crap, give him the horns, and may your enemies never get your goat. To Bill.